trusts. When you want to access resources in a domain that's different from your local domain where your user account is stored, this requires that these two participating domains form some sort of trust relationship. Back in our NT4 days, trust across forests used to require separate, explicitly defined trusts for each and every domain, which was often really difficult to manage, especially when you had a lot of domains to contend with. So if we had a user in one domain that wanted to access a share in another domain, a trust relationship had to be created in the domain where the file share is located back to the domain that the user is from so we could trust that domain. But what if there are more users in other domains that also need access to this file share? Well, they'll also need a trust to be created as well. But what if a user in the domain that's doing all of the trusting here at the moment has users that need access to resources in one of the other domains? Well, then a trust would need to be created the other way, trusting this domain. And of course, if we wanted all domains to be able to access resources from any other domain, you can probably by now see what a mess this is and how it can become rather difficult to set this up and manage it. In fact, I've probably missed out on including a couple of trusts in this image, which should indicate how difficult it can be to get it right. Another thing with NT4 trusts is that they're non-transitive, meaning that just because domain one and two trust each other and domain two and three trust each other, it doesn't mean that domain one or three will trust each other. In this case, a trust relationship would have to be established explicitly between one and three for this to occur. Now, thankfully, in Windows Server 2008, it's much easier to build these trust relationships. When you add a child domain into an existing Windows 2008 forest, the installation wizard asks you if you want to join an existing domain in an existing forest. When we say yes, which is what we need to do when we build a child domain, Windows automatically creates a two-way transitive trust between the parent domain, winstructorlab.com, and the child domain, london.winstructorlab.com. This means that we don't have to configure anything as both domains automatically trust each other so people in either domain giving the appropriate permissions can access resources in the other domain. And if we then create another child domain underneath our existing London child domain, then this new child domain will also automatically trust both the London parent domain as well as its parent, winstructorlab.com domain. And again, we really didn't have to configure anything as this two-way parent-child trust relationship was created automatically. Now, the other great thing about Windows 2008 trust relationships is that even when we have two domain trees with different names, when we install the second domain tree, again, we're asked if we want it to join an existing forest. When we say yes, this creates what's called a tree root trust between the two trees in the forest. This now means that any domain in the entire forest will have a two-way transitive trust relationship with every other domain. And that means that a member from any domain in the forest, again, given the appropriate permissions, will be able to access resources in any other domain in the entire forest. Now, everyone knows that the shortest path between two objects is a straight line. So when we have a situation where our user here in our London Winstructor subdomain needs to access resources such as a file share in our Sydney development domain, why do we have to take this long way around our domain hierarchy just to get to the domain that we want to connect to? Well, we don't. We could create a shortcut trust from one location directly to another to shorten the process. So here, since Sydney now trusts London, our user can directly access resources in the Sydney domain without having to traverse through the entire forest. This means that logon times and access times are quicker due to the direct path available to Sydney. You see, without a shortcut trust, when we attempt to access a resource in the Sydney domain from within London, our user will have their credentials passed to a domain controller in every single domain up the winstructorlab.com tree, over the tree root trust and down the development tree until it reaches the Sydney domain. And when you have a lot of child domains, this could, of course, take a while, so a shortcut trust can really speed things up. Now, shortcut trusts can either be one-way or two-way, so if we happen to have configured a one-way trust here between London and Sydney, 
then whilst those users in London can access resources in Sydney directly, the users in Sydney will have to go the long way around and traverse the domain trees if they want to access resources in the London domain. So if both parties need access to each other's domains on a regular basis, a two-way shortcut trust would be the better option. Now another type of trust relationship you can create is a Realm Trust. In Active Directory, or really just Microsoft networking in general, we refer to a Realm Trust as a domain. Other operating environments might use Kerberos version 5 Realms, so we can utilize a Realm Trust in order to exchange information with them. Now similar to Realm Trust is an external trust where you might want to establish a trust relationship with another domain, such as when your company might be working closely with another company on a specific project, or maybe you've taken over another company and you need to exchange resources with that company, but you still want to keep their network physically separate from yours. But with an external trust, if you want to establish a two-way exchange of resources, then you'll need to configure the trust both ways like we did back in Windows NT4. Now another thing to point out about these trust relationships is that a trust relationship by itself doesn't really do anything except pave the way for communication between two domains. It doesn't grant either side of the trust any sort of access to resources inside the other domain unless access has been explicitly granted through group membership or via an access control list. So just because in our previous example we have a trust relationship from London through to Sydney, neither the administrators or regular domain users have access to resources on the other side. So this user in London won't be able to access a file share in the Sydney domain unless an administrator in the Sydney domain either adds the London user into the access control list for that Sydney share or adds the London user to a Sydney domain group that has access to the share. Now, if you do want London users to have administrative access over the Sydney domain, then the Sydney administrator would need to add those users into the administrators group in Sydney, and then the London administrators would be able to administer the Sydney domain as well. So by just creating trust relationships, don't think that you've opened up your entire network for the London people. Any access must be explicitly granted. So let's look at how we can configure trusts and we'll do that using the Active Directory Domains and Trust Console. So we'll click on Start and we'll choose Administrative Tools and then we'll launch Active Directory Domains and Trusts. Now notice in here we already have two different domain trees. We have winstructorlab.com and winstructordev.com. Now if I expand winstructorlab.com, I also have a child domain here which is our London child domain in the winstructorlab.com domain tree. Now, you might be surprised to learn that in order to create these trusts, I didn't have to do anything at all. They were automatically created when I installed each domain using the DC promo wizard. So let's see how we can configure a trust relationship with an external domain. Now, I've already gone ahead and installed Active Directory on another server in my network into a domain called winstructorsales.com. So the first thing we want to do before we can even think about creating a trust between these two domains is to ensure that DNS on both sides are able to resolve each other. So on this side, the winstructorlab.com side, we'll click on Start and we'll go to Administrative Tools and we'll fire up our DNS console. Now we'll go and expand our server here, DC01, and down the bottom here you can see Conditional Forwarders. So if we right-click on that and choose to create a new Conditional Forwarder, at the top here, we'll need to enter in the DNS name of the domain, which is going to be winstructorsales.com. And then we'll need to enter in the IP address of the DNS server for the winstructorsales.com domain. So that's 10.32.0.99. And we can see that it attempts to validate the IP address and it has turned green, so that's a good sign. So we'll go and click on OK. So what we've just set up here using a conditional forwarder is whenever a resource in our domain needs to access a resource in the winstructorsales.com domain, we're going to forward that query to this DNS server here we've just configured. And of course, we're going to need to do the same thing in their network as well. 
Now I've just switched over to the windstructorsales.com domain controller and we'll need to configure a conditional forwarder to the windstructorlab.com domain. So again, we'll click on start. We'll choose administrative tools and we'll fire up the DNS console. Now we'll expand our server over here, DCT02, and we'll select conditional forwarders and we'll right click and we'll create a new conditional forwarder. Then as before, we'll need to enter in the DNS name of the domain, which in this case is going to be winstructorlab.com and then the IP address of the DNS server in the winstructorlab.com domain which is 10.32.0.2. And we can see it's resolved that address fine and validate it, so we'll click OK. Now I've just switched back to our winstructorlab.com domain, so we'll need to go back and open up Active Directory Domains and Trusts. And then we'll need to choose where we want this trust to be created. Now that's going to be over here and uh, winstructorlab.com, so we'll right click on that and choose properties. Now we'll choose the trust tab and down the bottom here we'll click on the new trust button. Now this will start up the new trust wizard so we'll click next and the first thing we'll need to do here is set out who we want to trust with this trust. Now since we want to allow the people in the winstructorsales.com domain to access resources in our domain we'll enter in winstructorsales.com and we'll click next. Now we have two different types of trust that we can create, either an external trust or a forest trust. The difference first of all is that the external trust is non-transitive and really designed for when you want to connect a Windows 2008 domain to another domain running Windows NT4 through to Windows 2003 and we can configure any domain in our forest to trust another domain in another forest. Whereas the forest trust is a transitive trust which will allow access to all of the domains in either forest. And with the forest trust, we'll configure one forest root domain to trust another forest root domain. So since both of my domains, winstructorlab.com and winstructorsales.com are both forest root domains, let's select the forest trust option and we'll click next. And then we can set up either a two-way trust, a one-way incoming trust, or a one-way outgoing trust. Now, since we're dealing with transitive trust here, the two-way trust option allows users in this forest, winstructorlab.com, to be authenticated in the Winstructor Sales forest, and users in that forest can be authenticated back here as well. Now, if we choose a one-way incoming trust, this will be for configuring users in the Winstructor Sales forest to access resources in our forest here. And finally, we have the one-way outgoing trust, and if we select this option, then we'll be configuring users in this forest to access resources in their forest. So the question you need to ask yourself here is, do both forests need access to each other? Well, if so, you're gonna choose a two-way trust. If we need to allow them access to our resources, but we don't need access to theirs, then we'll choose a one-way incoming trust. And finally, if we need access to them, but they don't need access to us, then we'll choose a one-way outgoing trust. So let's just leave the default here at a two-way trust and we'll click next. Now, when we're configuring this trust, do we want to set up both sides here or only our side allowing them access to us? Now, if we choose the first option here for this domain only, then we'll be relying on the administrators at Winstructor Sales Network to create another trust for us to be able to access their network. Now, if you do have trust creation privileges in both domains, you can choose the second option and then create them both. Now this option will require you to have the enterprise admin permissions in both forests. Now, since I do have admin rights on both networks, I'm gonna choose the second option here and click next. And now we'll need to enter in the details of an account that has permission to create the trust on the Winstructor sales side. So I'm just gonna type in the username and password for the administrator account. And we'll click next. Now when we create this trust, what sort of access do we want to allow Winstructor Sales to have in our Forest Winstructor Lab? Well, we could choose from forest-wide authentication, which simply means that we'll allow them access to any domain inside our WinstructorLab.com forest. Or we can choose selective authentication, 
where we'll need to explicitly define which servers in which domain that users in the Winstructor sales domain have access to. Now, if there are specific servers in certain domains that you only want users gaining access to, then you'd want to choose the second option here. But I'll allow access to the entire forest though, so we'll choose the top option, but you can change it back to selective authentication later on if you need, so it doesn't matter what we choose here, we'll just click next. And here we have basically an identical screen to the last one, except with this screen, we'll be configuring the reverse settings. What sort of access that we'll have in the Winstructor sales forest. Again, we can choose forest-wide authentication so we can access any server and any domain or just selective ones. So we'll leave the default at forest-wide and we'll click next. Now we'll just get a little summary of what we're about to create, which is a two-way transitive trust with forest-wide authentication so we can see all of their domains and they can see all of ours. And with the appropriate permissions, each side will be able to access the other's resources. So we'll click next. And here we can elect to route any authentication requests for any UPN suffixes in our forest to the local forest if we like. So if you've created additional UPN suffixes for use in the forest, you can choose to enable them for use across our forest-wide trust. So I'm going to leave the default here at both name suffixes of Winstructor Dev and Winstructor Lab and we'll click Next. Then we'll get our final summary here, so we'll click Next. And then we have the option of actually confirming the outgoing trust, which is always a good idea as it's nice to know that it actually worked before we head off to lunch. So we'll say yes and we'll click next. And then we can confirm the incoming trust as well. And since I'm about to head off to lunch with the administrator from Winstructor Sales, we better say yes and confirm this trust as well. And then click next and finally finish. Now in the trust tab here, we can now see a new trust that's been set up for winstructorsales.com and it's both an outgoing trust and down here we can see we have an incoming trust. So this means that now once our users in either forest are given the appropriate permissions, they'll be able to access resources in each other's networks. Now if we select our winstructorsales.com trust here and click on the properties button and then the authentication tab, like I mentioned earlier, we can change the authentication type to selective if we like. And on the name suffix routing tab, we can see that routing is enabled for the winstructorsales.com forest. And this means that if a user from the winstructorsales.com forest happens to log into our domain using their credentials from the Winstructor Sales forest, then we'll route this login request to the winstructorsales.com forest for authentication. Now, one thing I also should mention is, although we've just set up a transitive trust between Winstructor Lab and Winstructor Sales, any other domain trees that we have in our forest aren't automatically shared. So you can see over here on the left that we do have another domain tree here, winstructordev.com. So if we go and cancel this and then right click on Winstructor Dev and choose Properties, and then the Trust tab, you'll note that in here, this domain knows nothing about winstructorsales.com. So if you need these two to communicate, you'll need to create another trust relationship between them. Okay, well, let's go and check that our trust works as we expected it to. So if we go and click on Start, we'll go and open up Computer and we'll go to our C drive. And we're going to right-click here and we'll create a new folder. And let's call this folder Marketing. And let's say that our company is going to use this folder to work on marketing campaigns with our partners over at Winstructor Sales. So we'll right click on this folder and we'll choose Share. Now from the drop down list here, we're going to choose Find. And then we'll select the Locations button. And we'll choose our winstructorsales.com forest and click on OK. And now we'll select Advanced. And then the Find Now button. And then we can scroll down and take a look at any users we want to add to this share. Now I've already gone ahead and created a group here called Marketing. So we'll select the Marketing group and we'll click on OK and then OK again. And we'll give the Marketing group full control by making them a co-owner of this share and we'll click on Share and then Done.
Now I've just switched over to my Winstructor Sales Domain Controller here, so let's go and try and access the share that we just created in the Winstructor Lab domain. So we'll click on Start, and we'll right click on Computer and we'll select Map Network Drive. Now I'm gonna leave the default here at the Z drive, it really doesn't matter what letter I choose. And for the folder, we'll try to connect to dco1.winstructorlab.com slash marketing. And then we'll click finish. And there's the new share, fully accessible over our forest wide trust that we just created. And the great thing was, it was very simple to configure. Now back on our dco1winstructorlab.com domain controller, if we no longer need this trust by the way, this job's a little easier since it's as simple as selecting the trust from the list and then clicking on the remove button. Now we can choose to remove only the local domain trust or both domains, winstructorsales.com and winstructorlab.com, but removing both will require you to have credentials in the remote domain. So I'm gonna select both and we'll type in the administrator account and the administrator password and we'll click on okay. Are we sure we wanna remove the trust? Yes, we are. And then we'll need to remove the incoming trust from Winstructor Sales as well. So we'll select that and we'll click remove and we'll say yes to remove both and we'll click on okay. All right, so now we've created a forest-wide trust relationship with our existing forest, which includes the winstructorlab.com domain tree and the winstructordev.com domain tree. So now what we have is winstructorlab.com and winstructorsales.com both trust each other. Then we created a shared marketing folder on the winstructorlab.com domain controller and explicitly granted the marketing group over in the winstructorsales.com forest access to our shared folder. And really, it was pretty simple to set up. In this video, we've looked at how you can create trust relationships with other forests and domains. If you've been around a while managing trust back in the NT4 days, you'll no doubt appreciate how easy we have it in Windows Server 2008. Since all trusts are automatically created within our own forest, there's not a lot you need to do.